This is comb honey, honey in its natural state. Honeybees constructed the six-sided wax cells and each cell is filled with honey. Comb honey is edible. For thousands of years, humans have consumed honey like this, wax and all. But we are more familiar with honey in this form, extracted and packed in a jar. Honey production starts when field bees collect nectar from flowers. You may notice some of these returning field bees appear to have swollen abdomens. They are filled with nectar. Back in the hive, field bees share their nectar with other workers, and the transformation to honey begins. Bees add enzymes to the nectar, enzymes that convert the complex sugar molecules in the nectar to simpler ones. These enzymes are added in a process of sharing and regurgitation. The next step is to reduce the water content of the nectar. This is accomplished by evaporation. Bees fan with their wings to increase airflow and enhance evaporation. Once the water content is reduced to approximately 17%, the honey is capped. The cell is now sealed. Interestingly, the concentration of sugar in honey means it will not ferment. Honey sealed and stored properly will last for years. If you watched our video on keeping bees, you will know that modern beehives use movable frame hives. The honeycomb is constructed in a movable frame. This is a standard deep frame filled with honey. Most of it is capped, that means it's cured to probably less than 17% water. There's about uh, five pounds, that's over two kilograms of, of honey in this particular frame. And uh, you can see the very nice pure honey here. These boxes on the truck called honey supers are filled with frames of honey ready for extraction. The bees have been removed from the supers. The next step is to move these supers into a warm room. The honey flows best if it is warm. Honey should be less than 17.8% water. I checked a number of samples with a refractometer. They were all under 17%. If the moisture content is too high, you can lower it by moving air through the supers. With the honey warmed, we're ready to extract. The first step in this part of the process is to remove the wax caps from the cells. I am doing that with an electrically heated knife. The cappings are pure beeswax. This wax can be separated from the honey in the tray and melted into beeswax blocks. This device I'm now using is an uncapping scratcher, useful for removing small capped areas. Once I have three frames uncapped, we can load the extractor. Extractors come in a variety of sizes and styles. This extractor is designed to extract large or small frames. It holds three large frames tangentially, or nine small frames radially. We are loading three large frames. Baskets hold these frames tangentially. You can probably see how this is going to work. When we spin the basket at a relatively high speed, centrifugal force will throw the honey out of the cells on the outside of the frame. We have to be careful with the first part of this extraction as there is considerable weight of honey in a frame like this, over two kilograms, and only half of it is free to escape when the extractor starts. The cells on the inside remain loaded with honey, a considerable weight that will create significant forces while spinning, possibly damaging the comb. We are ready to start. I've placed a plastic bag over the controller to protect it from honey. I've set the extractor to a slow speed for this part of the extraction. As mentioned before, excessive force could damage the comb. We can see that the honey is streaming from the comb onto the sides of the extractor.
Once this side is partially extracted, it is necessary to flip the frames to extract honey from the other side. Now we can run the extractor faster as there is less honey in the frame. I usually do one more flip and do a final high speed extraction on the first side. The honey collects in the bottom of the extractor and flows out the gate. At this point the honey is filled with pieces of wax. We use a coarse filter to remove these larger pieces. The filtered honey flows into a pail below. The honey requires a final filtering. To accomplish this we pour the honey through a special filter cloth. This removes all small particles of wax or pollen clumps. Before bottling I do one more moisture check with the refractometer to make certain the honey is less than 17.8% moisture. The honey is ready to bottle. This is pure unpasteurized honey, the type of honey you would buy at stores specializing in organic foods. I mentioned that this extractor also extracts small frames. Small frames sit in the extractor radially, like spokes in a wheel. This compact extractor holds nine frames. An advantage to this configuration is that you do not have to flip the frames. Both sides extract at the same time. If you decide you would like to keep bees, there are some inexpensive hand cranked extractors available, ideal for extracting the honey from a small number of beehives. Watch our video Keeping Bees for an overview on beekeeping basics and for more science and technology projects and videos visit our website hyloroad.com.